Carbon. Please make very well welcome Lisa McBudgen. Thank you, and thank you, LLS, for letting me speak today. And I'd just like to say a big thank you to Arnie Dot. That was a really lovely welcome this morning. It's great to be in Wiradjuri country. So, I don't know, these lights are really bright, but I just want a quick show of hands. I'm here to talk all things carbon. Obviously, we're talking about natural capital today, but carbon is a big component of that. But I really want to ask who here has looked at their emissions on farm? Hands up. Who has done a carbon account, emission numbers on their farm? Who here has the emissions intensity of their product off farm? Radio. Interesting, thank you. So I guess why are we here? I'm here from the on-farm carbon advice. So the on-farm carbon advice today is talking about um, what we deliver. So I'm New South Wales DPI. Um, this project is funded through PIPAP. We have discussed PIPAP. Um, it's the Primary Industries and Productivity Abatement Program. So this is jointly um, delivered through New South Wales DPI and, look, we're government, we like all our acronyms, but it's a DQ, so Department um, of Energy, Environment and Water. I think that's close. Oh, Department of Climate Change, there we go. Newly changed. Um, so I guess with this project, um, what we're really about is educating farmers about what's happening in the carbon space. We really want to demystify what's happening. Um, obviously, um, we're aware that there's a lot of pressures happening um, from that global context with um, Catherine spoke about, but I guess we're here today to see what the opportunity is, whether it's through an environmental or carbon market. So with our project, it's actually funded to June 26, and what it really is about is being practical. We're about delivering education and training. We really want, um, we recognise that farmers are at a different stage of their journey, understanding carbon, so we've got a lot of people here that are at the very start, just learning about natural capital and carbon, but we've also got some people here, such as the Huggins family, that are quite progressive and actually got some projects undertaken. Um, I think what um, our education and training is about is making sure that the, the buzzwords and the um, carbon literacy of everyone, that we're speaking the same language and so we can understand. Um, through these education and training, we actually have a lot of workshops that um, start with the carbon farming fundamentals. And then we actually lead um, farmers through that journey of learning to more um, intense technical um, masterclasses. We also undertake farm carbon management plans, and through those management plans, we actually um, look at an individual farm. I'll have detail a little bit later, but we look at the emissions profile, but also the emissions intensity. Well, what's different about these farm carbon management plans is that we really look about the opportunities um, in these environmental um, and carbon markets, but also about the opportunities that you can potentially do by just insetting on farm. We have demonstration sites, but also a community of practice and a website too. So I'd just like to do a call out, Claire Edwards, who's our carbon development officer in the room. Can you raise your hair, uh, hand, Claire? So basically, Claire has been delivering these carbon fundamental workshops across the state from Bega to Broken Hill. Um, in the past year, we've had 58 workshops engaging with around 1,200 farmers, and I think with the outreach, we've over um, 4,000 farmers. So we're really about the grassroots, learning about what you can do on farm in your regional area, and that's where Claire's been delivering. So we've been talking about natural capital all day, but I just wanted to just show this picture and acknowledge LLS with the natural capital information that they've got online and, and disseminating to farmers is that carbon is actually a really important um, component of this framework. Um, I think we've discussed a lot already this morning, so I don't need to go into the in-depth of where we fit in natural capital. But I guess I really wanted to highlight like the New South Wales ag emissions. So we've got 15% of New South Wales emissions are from agriculture. Um, hands up, did you think this is a, a big number or a low number? Like, it's interesting to gauge from people. Like, there's a lot of burden um, within the agriculture at the moment that a lot of farmers feel like they're, I wouldn't say victimised, but they've got a lot of accountability um, to market about what's happening with their emissions. But 15% is a relatively low amount from New South Wales when we've got larger emitters out there. But what I really wanted to show here is where your livestock methane is quite a large component, 69%. So 70% of those emissions on farm is from your livestock. 
Obviously, we've got a large um, mixed farming area here. We've got a lot of um, cropping as well, and um, I think Catherine mentioned that too, that there is a lot um, of nitrous oxide that can be limited, um, reduced with um, fertiliser use. But yeah, definitely the methane is the big contributor. So, confusing slide to demonstrate carbon is very confusing. We've got a lot of mixed messages out there. We've got a lot of positive and we've got a lot of negative. I guess on the positive, there's opportunities to actually um, have another um, value-add income stream or even in setting on farm. And the negative is, is like there's a lot of investment, there's a lot of funds out of there that are investing in, are they speculators or what are they investing in? And I think that's where Catherine really hit it on the head is that there's these people at a corporate level looking to invest, but they don't know the practicalities of farming. So Catherine did touch on this, so I won't stay here too long, but it's just the, the influences or those that are impacting on our farm and where that's driven from. So that's from a global context, government context, um, the corporate supply chain and also the consumers as well. And this is where you can see this is starting to impact. Like when I say consumer driven, you might see in your local supermarket that you can buy a carbon neutral beef or lamb now. Um, when you actually look at that detail, if it's potentially may not be carbon neutral from that farm, but when you read the detail, that particular retailer might have had to offset elsewhere to market that as carbon neutral. But then from a consumer um, perspective too, is that they actually want carbon neutral products. So that's where our balance is. Um, I think we've already touched on the EU and the market driven components, but just from the wool side, a participant of one of our workshops, they just did a um, trip through Europe and they went to some of the wool mills and they had to start, they said the pressure is for emissions intensity numbers that you need to access that market for wool. I won't go into the definition of carbon farming for too long, but really carbon farming is about managing a land to reduce or remove carbon in the atmosphere. That's where we've got to start thinking about a lot of the management activities that we're doing on farm. A lot of this is best practice that we're doing anyway, but about the accountability of what we're doing and how we measure and document that. So through our evaluation, it's a no, not that uncommon to see that the skills and knowledge and confidence is the largest barrier to even enter into understanding or enter into a carbon market or an ACU scheme. Time and cost is something that every farmer has um, barriers to. We're all time poor um, and the cost sometimes can be prohibitive, so particularly if you're looking at such a soil carbon project where a lot of the baselining is quite expensive. So what farmers are telling us, and I think this is quite interesting, please note the grey area is least important, the blue is more, most important, but really farmers are concentrating on the environmental aspects in the landscape. They're really focusing on the soil erosions and the soil qualities and they rank that really important, whereas the access to markers and the opportunity to sell carbon credits is quite a low priority at the moment. So different farming systems have different profiles and here I just wanted to show that obviously I spoke again, I spoke before that like 69% of um, emission profiles really come from the enteric methane of livestock. But it just shows um, the large sort of um, blue areas is that large percentage, so dairy farmers, large um, beast basically, um, and when you get to your grasslands and pulses, it changes the profile and that's where you start seeing your fertilisers and your stubble retentions and sort of your field burnings or your paddocks, um, stubble burnings make an impact. So one of the large components of our delivery is um, farm carbon management plans. This is where we really want people to start making that step of knowing their numbers on farms, starting to document about what their emissions are, what sort of data you need to collect on farm. We're really getting the pressure to start um, reducing our carbon footprint. By doing your emissions number, it's really good over multiple years, so then you can start tracking your management. Often it's reflected in the seasonal conditions too, and you can see that in your numbers. But really, by doing your numbers and getting your emissions intensity allows you to get better market access. So when we think about undertaking like a different um, activities on farm, we really need to understand what your motivation is. Is it what's your, your business, your lifestyle and landscape sort of fit to your motivation? So is it to sell carbon credits? Maybe not, might be insetting. Is it really about that co-benefits, the productivity benefits? So looking at um, tree shelter belts that may have um, the uh, animal husbandry benefits. But also we've got banks this afternoon. Is it looking at the supply chain and green finance that you might have? And we've obviously talking about stewardship. 
I guess with our carbon plans, it's not a life cycle assessment. It's really about knowing your numbers, your emissions, and then emissions intensity. So keep calm and farm on. Don't feel overwhelmed that we've got to take this next step and start knowing our numbers. I think there is a lot of data gaps, but just start. And I think when you do start, you start to understand where those gaps are and what um, sort of data collection you need to focus on. This is a busy slide, but it sort of highlights the areas of data that you need to capture. This will be shared later, but I think I really want to highlight is the, in the livestock component, we really need to start concentrating on our livestock weights. Um, be consistent um, in weighing our livestock, and there's a lot of default values that are used in all these emission calculators, but I think with technology, um, look, auto drafters in livestock yards, but even OptiWays that might be in the paddock, if we start understanding um, the weights of our livestock, it really helps with understanding um, our emissions intensity on farm. Basically, we want to produce a lot of um, stock, but we want to get them off farm quickly too. So we want them to get that growth rate and off, and then we'll have a better emissions intensity. So with our carbon um, management plans, we really look at the natural assets. So with those natural assets, we, we look at the land capable, we look at um, the land class, we look at the topography. We actually um, use a lot of tools that are sort of mentioned here, a lot of the biodiversity, um, look C, we look at the look B, um, and we map them out for farmers in addition to doing all the emission numbers as well. And I, as I mentioned earlier, once you get this plan, we then do actions. So actions, what you can do on farm. I just wanted to give you an example of Tringy and Condobolin Research Station. And it really highlights in the purple the emission sources on farm. And the really long um, waterfall graphs there is showing how livestock is such a large component. Every farm, again, is different. And I just think it's a nice comparison there to see where those emission sources are. In the green, you'll notice that that's the sequestration, and obviously um, we can improve in those areas, but that's where the action plan happens, and that's where potentially looking at the biodiversity and sequestration, we can look at um, potential vegetation um, activities that could happen there. I'll skip through, I guess, the, la the opportunity mapping that we do, de do with our plans. I just wanted to show on screen. So this particular um, slide, I'm not sure if you can see the colours on screen, but basically the highlighted tree shelter belts and we've got remnant vegetation, but we've actually scoped out where there's further opportunities for that farmer to pursue. Um, and then the plan is that they'll link through to the BCT or any of the New South Wales biodiversity as well. So there's lots of opportunity, these environmental and carbon markets, and I think it's just taking that step identifying on farm where these can be. It may not be something that you want to instigate straight away, but it might be part of your one, five, ten year plan. Just echoing what we heard before, this is the in, um, demand credits map of a particular farm, and so that farmer can now reach out and get further advice. So what we've learnt so far, data collection is very time consuming. Um, but don't feel overwhelmed. Like, as I said, stay calm and farm on. Like, Preparation is key, like we have to do our best, we have to do all our financial statements end of year. Really just start focusing on your numbers and start collecting that data. Um, undertaking a farm carbon management plan is really about managing your expectations and don't get caught up in the finer detail, just start um, basically. And if you can start collating um, your numbers over a few years, it really helps track your emissions um, and it really helps um, determine to your emissions intensity. Again, lack of livestock weight sort of reduces that outcome as well. So key messages here, just knowing your numbers really help with your um, farm business and informing your strategies and opportunities that you may have. Um, start your carbon accounts, basically. And really understand that sometimes there is a possible negative impact, there's risks associated. We have been talking today like about the motivations like with your business fit, your landscape fit and whatnot. We're talking about permanence periods if you do decide to enter into some of these agreements. I think potentially that's a positive and it can be a negative, so I think that's something that we need to be aware. Um, and also some of the carbon projects that you may enter to have those permanence periods, but also um, may have some, like it could be 25 years, it could be 100 years, so it's just what um, fits for your business. And at the end of the day, just start measuring and recording. 
Um, just wanted to highlight, like New South Wales DPI is a research um, organisation and we do do demonstration too. I think it was mentioned before by Catherine, it takes seven years to get to commercialisation in a government sense. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer, it feels, but I guess really wanted to highlight with what's happening in carbon and we're really like educating about reducing emissions is that we're focusing on low methane sheep and beef, so that genetic side, but also the, the feed efficiency side. Um, we've got carbon neutral research stations, that's where a lot of um, demonstrations are being, but also looking at biomass um, and energy and what can actually happen in that space. Um, and I think I'll finish there, but yeah, all I can do is encourage, start looking at your carbon accounts on farm and start doing your numbers. There's a lot of free tools out there and available, but if you do decide to undertake um, uh, education and training and come to one of our carbon fund farming fundamentals courses, please join us, look up our website. But also if you're looking at doing your numbers, we do run masterclasses too in knowing your numbers, but also we've got our farm carbon management plans as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's wonderful to have you here and I'm sure um, we'll have some questions for you on the panel session.